There's a book called The Complete Guide to Fasting by uh, Jimmy Moore and uh, Jason Fung, which I've just finished on audiobook. Um, it's a very good book um, if you're interested in fasting, and I recommend it as a primer if you are looking to get into it and want to do the good thing, which is to read up on it. Um, Jimmy Moore is a quite famous blogger um, who had the blog Little in La Vida Low Carb. Um, it's a keto diet blog in which he lost like 180 pounds um, and blogged about his experiences. Um, he also <coughs> he also then took up fasting and uh, with the help of his followers online and who seemed to be feel that he was betraying the low carb principles. But uh, fasting and keto complement each other really well, actually, because uh, they both involve the use of ketones in the body, and they train your body to use ketones, which are the uh, little bits of energy made when you break down fats, triglycerides. Anyway, he collaborated with Dr. Jason Fung, who's written uh, The Obesity Code and other books which advocate fasting as a cure for, well, as a cure, as a treatment for obesity and for other metabolic disorders such as diabetes. Um, and to write this book called The Complete Guide to Fasting. Um, I read it because, of course, I am fasting and I wanted to know as much as I could about it, about the downsides as much as the upsides. Oh, morning. 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 This cyclist going for a bike ride. Good day for it. Um, so, uh, keto, so what am I talking about? So, it spends a lot of time advocating for fasting throughout the book. Um, if there's one thing it does well is uh, sing the praises of fasting to the rafters uh, every page, really. I listen to the audiobook because that's the easiest way for me to ingest books at the moment with the time that I have, although I'm also reading some paper books. Um, so I don't, didn't get to see the layout. There is an accompanying PDF, which is quite a nice magazine layout, and I think probably the book is among long more more of that sort of style throughout the book are peppered quotes from so-called fasting all-stars people that um, advocate fasting and uh, social media um, stars and well known in the fasting community uh, quotes about fasting as they go along and uh, there are lots of discussion about the benefits of fasting for different conditions such as obesity and um, such as diabetes. And there are quite a few stories from Jimmy's experience of fasting and fasting for extended periods of time. A lot of discussion about what you can expect to feel when you're fasting, which is really great. Uh, apparently after two days, the hunger pangs sort of go away and you start to feel very elated and alive so that's an interesting one different there's a lot of thorough discussion about the different plans of attack if you like different modes of fasting so time restricted eating like I'm doing now uh, and uh, two day fasts and one and a half day fasts seven day fasts 14 day fasts and then even extended ones, like a month's worth of fast. And there's a lot of discussion about the history of fasting as well, which is useful to know because it's not a new thing by any means. Uh, and there's a quote by Mark Twain, I think, that um, fasting is better than any physician. Um, yeah. 
very helpful primer if you're interested in fasting and want to know more about it. It's very thorough. Half of it is written by Jason Fung, who is a uh, dietitian stroke doctor um, who runs a diet lab which involves a lot of fasting and there's a discussion in the book about his experiences of working that lab and what kind of treatments he puts his patients on for different uh, afflictions and it's different for example if you've got severe diabetes he might put you on a longer fast straight away to try and reduce your blood sugar levels uh, for example um, it's an it's lab is called in Intensive Diet Lab or something like that. Um, uh, and yeah, that was interesting to hear more about him and his actual approach to patients, having read his theories about obesity in the Obesity Code. It's interesting to hear how he actually goes about treating people um, and what plans he advocates. <coughs> so it's a good read. Definitely a good primer. Also, in the book, uh, important to note the people that shouldn't be fasting at all. Um, and I'm going to tell you them now, just in case you are considering it and you fall into the categories. So pregnant women or women that are breastfeeding should not be fasting because you pass on so many of your nutrients to your baby. So you uh, will likely cause them ill harm if you fast while you're breastfeeding or pregnant. Um, people under the age of 18, sorry, kids, uh, it's not a good idea because you're still growing. You still need way more nutrients in your body than you might think you need for every day because your body uses those nutrients to grow. But eat, eat healthily, kids. Don't eat junk food. Eat real food. Uh, eat homemade food uh, and plenty of it. Um, who else shouldn't be? If you're on diabetes medication and you're planning to fast, then you absolutely should have the help of a doctor and should be on top of it because fasting on medication can cause hypoglycemia, which is when your blood sugar dips below the normal and you could enter into a diabetic coma. Um, so it's very dangerous if you're not careful. Um, so have someone keep an eye on you. There's a walker here. I'm going to pause a sec. Look. Some horsies. Horsies. It's a nice morning. Um, there. So yes, if you're on diabetic medication or any heart medication, anything like that, then if you're considering a fast definitely talk to a doctor. Do not just do it. Um, and diabetes medication especially is dangerous when it comes to its interaction with fasting. Um, having said that, of course, uh, with the right help, yeah, fasting can apparently reverse type 2 diabetes in some patients. So, uh, it's definitely a route worth considering, in my opinion. So far, my experience of fast is it's not harmful at all. Uh, there's a quote. There's not a quote. Um, I remember in a book by Tolkien, uh, if you follow Lord of the Rings, the, um, the intrepid adventurers at one point had to run across Rohrim, I think it was, uh, for days at a time and they get to their campsite and there'd be no food to be had. So they'd tighten their belts and they'd carry on. And when I was a child reading this, um, I used to think, oh my goodness, that surely they'd keel over and die. I, don't, I couldn't picture in my mind how that would work. But of course your, your fat stores are there for just such a, a situation. If you have a wasting disease and you uh, can't keep any nutrients in your body, keep coming out the other end, uh, then your body protects you with these layers of fat. Um, you can survive a lot longer in hospital if you have them and your 
I'm fortunate enough to get some sort of diphtheria or similar where your body doesn't hold on to nutrients, the worst you'll get is dehydrated. Um, so it's worth bearing that in mind when it comes to getting down to your ideal weight because your ideal weight might be also dangerous when you do happen upon a bug like that. Anyway, um, so fasting is a, an ancient practice uh, and it's part of quite a number of religions. It's fallen out of favor in the less Western world recently. Um, but I don't, can't see how it is harmful particularly. In many ways it looks to be beneficial. But there's one thing that he says right the way through the book is that if you're fasting and you feel dizzy or ill or if you're uh, mindlessly hungry where you just cannot not be hungry, uh, like you'll be hungry for an hour or two, then just eat, especially if you feel ill, dizzy um, and like you're flatlining, then eat some sugary something to get your sugar levels up. Um, that might be the sign of underlying problem. Talk to a doctor. Uh, and throughout the book as well, they advise caution, make sure you get checked up. There are some stunning stories of people who have fasted for a long time. I think the record is 351 days. And they're also in the book, there are some recipes for things that you can have on your fast. So normally it's a water fast where you just drink water. Um, I think in Ramadan it's a uh, nothing fast, no water or anything to get dehydrated. But you don't do it for long enough to, for that to be a significant problem unless it's very hot. Um, <coughs> so if you water fast, that's all right, but some people drink coffee and tea as well. And some people drink what's called bone broth, which is when you boil bones for eight or so hours uh, along with some veggies and then just take the liquid and drink that. And that's got nice salts in it. It's got uh, some scant nutrition that will keep you going and will quell the hunger pangs a bit, but won't break your fast, at least that's the idea. Um, <clears throat> so there are things like that and also bulletproof coffee which technically will break your fast but the effects won't be too bad so you'll continue to fast. Um, and there are recipes in that book for all those things which is great actually and in the audiobook that I downloaded uh, it had a accompanying PDF with those recipes on. I'm definitely going to try the recipe for bone broth if I choose to do more extended fast. Um, yeah. So, into uh, the com complete guide to fasting by Jimmy Moore and Jason Fung. Definite recommend. Um, it's a comprehensive guide to beginning fasting or if you're interested in the topic of fasting, it's a broad general look at all the different types of fasting and how they've been used and how you might use them and discusses all the topics that you might want to think about. Oh, there's also an FAQ at the back which uh, <coughs> talks about questions like, won't I get hungry and irritable? Which is a very legi legitimate question uh, and I entreat you to read the book and find out the answer. Okay, bye.